And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is R.J. Spina, a metaphysical teacher who overcame serious illnesses. He returns today to talk about how to deprogram your subconscious mind, rewire your brain, and balance your energy. RJ, welcome back. It's great to see you again, my friend. Likewise. Thanks for having me, Jeff. It's always a pleasure. I've been looking forward to it. I want to go right into talking about our subconscious mind and things like that. So even if we start somewhere simple, how do you define the subconscious mind and what it can do? Okay, great question to start off with, Jeff. Why am I not surprised? (laughs) Okay, let's set some context. So... uh, Scientists today will say and have proven that the subconscious mind is responsible for 95% of our reality creation. Now, I want everyone to kind of just sit with that for a second and, and to realize that our thinking mind, our rational, finite thinking mind is only responsible for 5% of the life of the reality that we create for ourselves. So, I felt like I wanted to create the the treasure map on how to get to the subconscious mind and then remove all the limitations that are built in through societal programming, through brainwashing, whatever word, however you want to say that, which occurs, obviously. I wanted to have a robust and repeatable process to remove the limitations programs that have been programmed into the subconscious mind. And this is the reason why humanity doesn't lead or create the life that we all know that we're capable of, because we over-rely on just the 5% reality creator, which is the rational thinking mind. But the true reality creator is the subconscious mind. And so by being able to access the subconscious, bringing the subconscious into your conscious mind, you can then see these limitation programs. And just like an unwanted program on your computer, once you can see it, you can delete it. And once it's deleted, what happens is the collapsing or the constriction of your subconscious, it starts to open up and the real you, your unfiltered, your unsullied, your untainted higher mind starts to take over more and more of your reality creation. And this is where the superhuman or the unlimited human being Uh, how it's going to manifest itself. We have to address the subconscious mind because that is the true reality creator for all of us. Would you say that we are slaves to our subconscious mind? I would say the slave mentality has been programmed into the subconscious mind 100%. This has been going on for thousands of years. That might even be a whole nother uh, talk. (laughs) That's your next book. (laughs) Right, Right, there you go. So the, and and we can actually kind of just look at this real real briefly. What you said about the sort of the slave mentality. We we measure or quantify our existence based upon how productive we are, right? Now that's the slave mentality. That's exactly what it is. And all of us go about our day all day long. If we have a big to do list and we check it all off, we're like, oh, I had a great day today. Well, what do you mean? I got a lot done, right? Yeah. Only a slave thinks, only a slave quantifies its existence through how productive it is. That's one example. It's a good example, but that's one example about what I mean about all these limiting beliefs that we have programmed into us. We none of that is germane to who and what we really are. That's something that occurs through societal conditioning upon incarnation into the lower frequencies of the physical universe. And that's a big one. And the new book, as you know, Change Your Mind, shows you exactly how to bring about to your conscious mind, all those limiting beliefs, see it consciously, delete it. And now you can start to own your own mind. And when you own your own mind, you can actually create the life that you truly desire. I agree with you that a lot of our limiting beliefs are learned behaviors or learned ideas from our environment. But do you think we also filter ourselves? Like we know we do things that we shouldn't be doing, or at least we don't, or we think they're wrong and then we limit ourselves? Okay, I would say, I would, yes, I would say this, Jeff. Um, all of us at our core, okay, what we can call the I am sentience, this divine intelligence, all of us are, are a fractal of, of God, a drop of God. We actually are God, and we are sentience, which is a divine intelligence, which is our love and wisdom, whose subsets are our talents and abilities. That's actually what we are. 
And that sentience, that divine intelligence has been given energy to create. And that's the energy that we use to think, to emote, to animate the body as I talk with my hands, to create experiences. Now, that's what it means <clears throat> to be created in God's image. That's exactly what God is. God is a divine intelligence, a sentience given energy to create with. That's what it means to be in God's image. Now, if we look at this deeply, and I have, if we look at this deeply, we are unlimited. We're a drop. We are a fractal, but it's the exact same components of God. So we are actually unlimited. Now, the reason why we don't lead an unlimited life or create the life that we truly desire is because part of societal conditioning is the voice in your head, is the self-talk, is the harsh inner criticism. So if we look at this, if we really step back, the only way that you can stop an immortal creator being you and me, is to have each and every immortal creator being stop themselves. And that's the self-judgment. That's the harsh inner critic. That's the voice in our head, which is not what we are. That is societal conditioning. That is brainwashing. Whatever word that you want to use, they both apply. But that is the only way that you can stop an immortal creator is to have each and every one of them stop themselves, and then we stop each other. So if we look at it very closely, it's insidious and it's brilliant. And so for me, I was compelled as the, as the uh, sequel <laughs> to supercharge self-healing. I wanted to write something that would give humanity in their hands a, a freedom in a book as a way to overcome these limiting programs. And when we realize the truth that we really are unlimited and the only thing that's stopping us is ourselves. And the book lays out exactly how to overcome the harsh inner critic so we can lead the life that we know that we're capable of. What about if you add fear to this? Because I think a lot of people want to make changes. They know they need to make changes. They hear what you're saying and they know you're right, but they're just afraid to do it. Yeah, well, fear is a big one. The, the, the two, from my perspective, Jeff, the two main components of our ego mind identity, right? What I, what I call the, the human character, the ego mind identity, there's two main components to it, fear and vanity. Fear and vanity. That's mostly what our ego mind identity gives us. And fear, because it breaks us out of our, our habitual patterns, our limitation patterns. So of course, we're afraid to step outside of the little fishbowl that we put ourselves in, because even though it's uncomfortable, it's familiar. So when we realize that it's the, the fear, by questioning the character that has the fear, by removing the aspects of the, the character itself, the ego mind identity, by questioning the fear. So in other words, <clears throat> excuse me, what does that look like? So someone wants to make some changes in their life, right? But they're afraid. So when that fear comes up, Jeff, just ask yourself, well, okay, who is it that's afraid? Me, I am, who am I? And the, the mind goes blank because that character is an illusion. It's your societal conditioning. It's not a real person. It's like shining a light on a shadow. As soon as you shine a light, it's gone. So as soon as you question the character who, who is enveloped in fear, by, which is what keeps it limited, who is it that, that's afraid? Well, me, I'm afraid. Who am I? It's gone. And now we can kind of step outside of that. So it, it's not by uh, capitulating to the awareness of the fear, because we're the awareness of the fear. It's by questioning the one who has the fear, which is your fake character, which is your limitation program, which is a product of the pattern subconscious egoic mind. So by questioning it, and the book lays out exactly how to do this, by questioning it, you're going to see it for what it is. It doesn't belong to you. And once you realize it doesn't belong to you, it has nothing to do with you. At that point, you can delete it and move forward. And this is how we're able to overcome fear, sadness, anxiety, depression, by questioning the character. Who is aware who is aware of these things and then once you question the character and the character starts to move away the real you takes over and the real you is unlimited all right can you tell us if you haven't already again the difference between subconscious mind and egoic mind great question okay so there's there is some synergy there there's some cross cross pollination if you will between those two things okay the easiest way to, to see or to tangibly differentiate the difference between subconscious and just pure egoic mind is subconscious patterned egoic mind, but the first part, subconscious pattern, are the things that have been drilled into us. 
For example, we touched upon the very beginning about being productive. Okay, that is societal programming. So in other words, we didn't choose that. We didn't consciously make that choice. It's drilled into us the moment that we get here. Got to earn your keep, right? Got to work hard, got to, right? Everyone, everyone is operating this way. And that's what toxic masculinity is, which is incessant doing this, the inability to be present, but always to have this incessant doing this. So subconscious, the subconscious patterned mind would be an example of that. The egoic mind would be an example of some sort of belief concept, ideology, role, or so-called knowledge that we're consciously choosing to align ourselves with, where we actually make the choice as opposed to the subconscious. It gets drilled in there. It's not a choice. This happens to us every time we incarnate, we incarnate, especially into the lower frequencies of the physical universe. So the egoic mind, Jeff, would be something we choose. Let's let's just pick religion just because maybe it's 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 easier, right? So Oh, I, you know, let's say we're raised Catholic. We didn't necessarily have that choice, but then we reach a certain age, like, you know what? I want to explore Hinduism, Buddhism, what, whatever it is, pick something, right? So you're making a conscious choice now, and then you identify with that, uh, with, with those behavioral patterns or those thoughts. So that's egoic mind. The stuff that's programmed in where you didn't make the choice, that's the subconscious mind. When you were talking about being productive, and it, it made me think about people who are lazy, but are they really lazy or we're just the story that we tell themselves, hey, they're being lazy. It, it depends. <laughs> it depends because th there can be like, you know, someone who can't stop doing, right? And it's like, oh, I wish that, I wish that dude would calm down a little bit. He's always, he's always, you know, energizer bunny, right? And then there's the other end of that spectrum, just like sort of never motivated really to do anything. Now, those are two sides to the same coin. If you ask me, the overdoing this and then never doing anything. They're just two extremes of the same thing. I think what we want to look at is are we passionate? And does it does it give our life true purpose and meaning? Uh, because nothing in and of itself has any meaning. Life is literally a blank canvas. There's no meaning to anything. We ascribe meaning to life itself as an immortal creator. We literally. Now, this is the, also the difference between when we have a goal that's purely egoic, pure ego mind identity, and we achieve this goal. And then as soon as we achieve it, it's empty. It's like, well, what's next? Right? So that, that's the egoic mind. Now, if we are passionate about something, we'll always be motivated always be motivated. And that's how you know that that goal or that desire is really born of the real you, the true self, because your motivation is coming from within. It's not exterior based. Because if your motivation is exterior based, if you remove that motivation, then all of a sudden you become more than complacent because the exterior motivation has been taken away because that motivation isn't intrinsic to the real you. It's not really coming from you. And that's how you know the difference between a goal that's born of you and a goal that's been programmed in or a goal that you've, you've chosen through your ego mind. So if we're unmotivated, it also could be because we're disconnected from who and what we really are. Because when we're truly connected to who and what we really are, there'll be a passion for life. There'll be a passion. And whatever that passion is, Jeff, who cares? What difference does it make as, as long as you're jazzed up, juiced up, and passionate about it? Now your life has meaning and purpose because that's your life. That's your life as opposed to feeling like you have to do this, have to do that, and then you actually do achieve some of these things and it's completely and utterly empty and meaningless. That's how you know that's your programmed egoic mind because it doesn't mean anything to you. When it means something to you deeply, tangibly, intrinsically, then that's the real you and that's where, the, that's where all true motivation lies. All right, I was trying to differentiate now between true self and egoic mind. Because egoic still kind of sounds programmed in a way, right? In a, in, in a way it is, because the, the ego mind identity is going to base base its identifications with everything outside of itself. Okay, let me, let me give a broader context to that. Okay. The foundation of the ego mind identity, the EMI, which from a purely physics perspective stands for electromagnetic interference, because it's not our true signal. 
So the foundation of the ego mind identity is identification with the form, with the body. Now, once you once you do that, you're going to you're going to identify with thoughts, emotions, the five physical senses, and the data stream that comes in through the five physical senses, which is the fodder that forms the intellect. Now, that's not you either. That's not you either. That is an egoic endeavor because it's identification with body consciousness. Oh, that feels good. Let's do that again. Or, or that was terrible. Let's make sure we don't do that again. Or it's based upon what it is that we see, hear, touch, taste, and smell, and we want more of that. That's all ego, mind, identity, or body conscious, body conscious uh, driven. The real self, the real you, the, the true self, the I am, the sentience, the fractal of God directly is not motivated through body consciousness. And that's what I mean about the passion, about having a desire and a passion. The motivation comes from within. And that's where the real power is. And that's where the superhuman lies is when we're totally in tune with that. And there's a big difference between that and the, the ideals, the desires of the ego mind identity, as well as those that have been programmed into our head. There's a big difference between those because it's tangible and it gives life true meaning. We're joyous and happy even prior to fulfilling the goal. You're able to be present and enjoy the entire journey. That's how you know you're in line with yourself. The ego mind identity can't do that. The ego mind identity is result oriented. It can't even function properly till it gets what it wants. And it's never at peace until that occurs. And then when that occurs and it finally has the achievement or the goal or the manifestation, it's empty. And then it's okay. Well, we did that. What's next? So we want to do the opposite, Jeff. We want to, we want to be at peace now while still harnessing desire and tension for the manifestation of a goal, while still maintaining peace, holding both of those things at the same time, the ego mind identity can't do that. It cannot do that. Only the real you, the I am, can be at peace right now and still have a desire and intention to manifest something, but enjoy the entire ride as, as we're doing it. Do you think that we can truly break free from our subconscious trap quickly? Yeah, I found, as, as you know, in the book, <clears throat> I did this on my own guinea pig, as, as you know, right? So I don't know when it was 12, uh, somewhere between 12 and 15 years ago. Uh, I, I, I could feel that my life wasn't my own. I used to tell my friends, my family, that I, I, it felt like something was swimming around my brain. These desires and intentions, they're not mine. I know they're not mine. This life that I'm leading, is it, it's not my own. And I can feel it. So I would have done anything to 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 liberate myself, to reach self-realization, however you want to say that. And so I came up with this, what I call, it's in the book, 14-day notebook exercise. And essentially what, what this means, in 14 days, anybody can do this because I've seen people do it. Uh, I've taught people this for years and years and years. So we have to understand, Jeff, what our core motivation is behind our thoughts, emotions, actions, and behaviors. We have to understand what is driving it? What is driving this? And once you get to the core motivation by just asking yourself very simple questions, you'll then know, is this my egoic mind? Is this my subconscious pattern of mind? Or is this me? Is this really me? And if you do as the book lays out, 14 days is all it takes. Just like I did with myself, I, I told my partner, I said, hey, we're going to, I'm going to take two weeks off. She's like, oh, great. Where are we going? I said, we're, not, <laughs> we're not going anywhere. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to force myself into self-realization. I'm going to deprogram my entire limitation programs of my mind. She's like, oh, okay, great. So, but I've taught this to so many people. I mean, it's tangible. People email me back in 24 hours just of doing this. They're like, I've never felt like this in my life. Because we just keep going, Jeff. We never, we don't question. Like, why am I really doing this? And then the first answer that we get is just like a justification. I talk about in the book, I, the, the first example that I used, I was going to start my 14 days. I woke up in the morning. I, I slept with my notebook and a pen. So I got up in the morning. I had to go to the bathroom. So I walk, I walk into the bathroom <clears throat> and I catch a glimpse of myself in the, in the bathroom mirror. My hair is a mess course, my hair is always a mess, but I, I catch a glimpse of myself in the mirror. My hair is a mess. And unconsciously, without thinking about it, I grab a brush and just start brushing my hair. There wasn't a thought, right? So I'm like, whoa, whoa, what, what is going on here? Why am I even, why am I doing this? I'm like, unconsciously, I'm doing this. What is going on? 
So I wrote down in my notebook, this is like 4.30 in the morning. I'm out of my mind, right? So that's why 4.30 in the morning, I wrote down brushing my hair. So then I said, well, why am I brushing my hair? The first answer I got is well, because it's a mess. That's not a core motivation. It's a justification, right? So I then asked myself, why do I care if my hair is a mess, right? The next answer I got was because I want people to find me attractive. Whoa. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Now, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. So then I was honest and courageous. And then I asked myself, why do I care if other people find me attractive? The next answer I got is because I get a sense of my own self-worth through other people's opinion of me. I knew in that moment I was onto something big by just asking myself questions to get to the core motivation, the complete and utter societal conditioning, complete and other subconscious patterned egoic mind. I then identified with that societal conditioning and then made a big deal out of myself in terms of what I look like. I was like, home run. This is the first question. And I felt different as soon as I got to that. And then, you know, for the next two weeks, I was out of my mind and I questioned every single thing I did. And in two weeks, Jeff, tangible liberation. I didn't have any limitations in my mind. And this was the precursor to being able to unparalyze myself. This happened way before this. There are ability to remove the limitations. I was doing this before I became told I had 48 hours to live, permanently paralyzed from the chest down, a list of diseases, a list of diseases that I was able to overcome. And part of the reason why I was able to part was because I had already removed the limitations. Every doctor, every special, RJ, you're, you know, there's nothing you can do. You're sick. You're permanently paralyzed. You're going to be taking medication. You're help. Nonsense. Nonsense. Because I didn't have those limitation programs running anymore. So in two weeks, by being diligent, if you want to finally meet the real you and not this programmed character who's trying to fit into society or trying to acquire or become, if you want to know the limitless being that is you, change your mind and do the 14 day notebook exercise. It will literally liberate you. I think that's amazing insight. You know, my self-worth is based on other people's opinion. So you have that insight. Where did you go next with it? Did you well, just as, say, as as oh, I, that, uh, if that's not true. And then you, and then you released it or what happens next? Yeah, the re exactly, Jeff. So the recognition Right, writing is the geometry of the soul, as Plato once said. Plato, Plato was fairly bright. Okay, so when we write things down, we see what's buried within our mind, and we bring it into our conscious mind. So as soon as I saw that me getting a sense of my own self worth through other people's opinion of me, that had nothing to do. That's complete and utter societal conditioning and brainwashing. As soon as I could see that it literally had nothing to do with me, the real me, I deleted it. Just like you have a program on your computer that you don't need anymore. It doesn't serve you anymore. You're like, I'm getting rid of this. This, this doesn't help me anymore. So in that moment, once, once I could see that it's not me, because we have all this misidentification. We think we're this. We think we're that. The misidentifications, misperceptions, misunderstandings, and misidentifications, I like to say, the unholy trifecta. So once I saw that that had nothing to do with me, I'm like, I'm never doing that again. Done. So I literally deleted it like it was an, uh, an unwanted program on my computer. So I never had to abide by that because I saw it clearly. It wasn't me. It's got nothing to do with me. So it's history. Now, that being said, I have still brushed my hair, you know, in the last 13 years or whenever it is that, I, that I, I've brushed my hair. But I brush my hair because I want to brush my hair, not because I get a sense of self-worth of other people, what they think of me. I just don't want my hair all over my face. So I continue to brush my hair, but I'm doing it for a completely different reason. I'm doing it because of my own authenticity, because I want to, because I choose to, because I have control over myself. Before I had was doing it unconsciously with no control over myself, to brushing my 4.30 in the morning. Who the hell does that? Someone who's programmed. So now you get to own your life because you now own your own mind. Well, then could you say that, okay, I'm brushing my hair because I like the way I look with it. I find myself attractive. It doesn't yeah. matter whether people find me attractive or not anymore, but I like it. You got it. You're totally different. 
Now, same action or same behavior, but for totally different reasons. For totally different reasons. There's like the helping some, yeah, like helping somebody across the street who's struggling across the street. You help them because it's in your heart to help them. You see someone struggling, you just want to help. Or are you running across the street to see how many people are checking you out? You take a selfie of yourself as you're helping someone across the street so you can put it on Instagram. Same action, right? Totally different intention and desire. Totally different intention and desire. And intention and desire is really what qualifies the, is what imbues the, the, uh, the experience itself is based upon the desire and intention. You still brush your hair. But you do it because you, you just want to you just want it for yourself. You don't want your hair in your face. Totally different reason. There's got to be a list of common limiting beliefs that you've discovered that we all adhere to. Is that true? Have you found that? And do you put that in the book? I sure, sure do. Yeah, the the book lists all these. The, you would think I would remember, but I'm on book four at this moment. Okay, but there's an there's an actual list, top 25 signs that you're dissolving your your pattern subconscious ego mind, top 10 limiting beliefs, right? There's absolute commonality. There's commonality in terms of the real you, what all of us are at our core. The absolute commonality in terms of certain traits and abilities that we all possess, because we all are love and wisdom. That's actually what we are, who subsets our talents and abilities. And there's list after list after list in this book. So people have an indicator of when they're actually tapping into the real them. And there's also a list after list after list of these things that we typically do that are proof of the subconscious pattern the egoic mind have actually taken over or are driving the, driving the bus of the incarnation. Absolutely. Getting your sense of self-worth, wanting attention, needing to be right, right? These are just, just a few of the favorites of the book of the pattern subconscious mind that actually stops our evolutionary progress. By the way, if you, if you need to be right, you're no longer interested in learning anything. You just want to be right. And then I go back to the egoic mind about vanity and fear, right? You see how these things relate, but yeah, the book actually has, has uh, several lists. And one of which is here's, here's a, here's top 10 limiting beliefs that all humanity suffers, suffers from at some point. Can there be a behavior with multiple limiting beliefs? For example, if you do a certain behavior and then you release it, then you go into a different behavior based on another limiting beliefs until you, so you have to erase two or three limiting beliefs till you finally get to the core. Yeah. Yeah. I, I found that there were a couple of things in there. Yeah. That's exact. That's a great question. There's several examples in the book because I did, like I said, I'm my own guinea pig I'm out of my mind. So I used examples from my own notebook and there were, there were a couple in there where I had addressed something and by addressing that, I got to something behind that, deeper behind that. And then I kept going and I'm like, oh, wait a second. And then I got to this. So yeah, it's, it's, it's multi-layered because of, because of the, the, the density, the energies and the frequency at which we are, we are programmed and conditioned that sometimes these things are three deep, so to, so to speak. But the good news is if you simply just keep questioning yourself, why do I think that? Why do I really feel that way? And you're just honest and you're just courageous, you'll get the answer. You will get the answer. And I found that if you ask yourself about four times, the first one or two are justifications, right? Why am I brushing my hair? Because it's a, because it's a mess. That's not, a, that's not a core motivation. It's a justification. So if you just keep asking, Two or three more times, you'll get to the core. And sometimes along the along that way is just what you said. You'll get to one limiting belief and, and then you go, well, wait, why do I really feel that way? And you'll dig right just like an arc Indiana Jones, finding the treasure, the treasure of the I am, who we really are. You just keep asking one more time and you get deeper and you're just removing all these limitations as you do it. There's nothing more beautiful, Jeff, than owning your own mind. We're not taught these things for a reason obviously, right? We're not taught these things. And also it does require self-control and self-discipline. And the ego mind identity and the pattern subconscious mind has no self-control and no self-discipline. We are so completely and utterly controlled that we are completely and utterly out of control because we're so controlled and we don't even realize it. But if you investigate properly, you'll see it with your own eyes and it'll be tangible and you can finally experience true liberation. Would you say then that our level of free will is pretty low? We're just running on 
programs, subroutines or something? Yeah, uh, yeah. In car- where we are, Jeff, uh, the low, what I say the, or have experienced as the low frequencies of the physical universe, uh, there's nothing more difficult. There isn't any more pressure ever put upon uh, a soul than where we are right now. So the level of free will, most people think of free will as doing whatever you want, whenever you want. That is not freedom. That is not freedom. Freedom, from my perspective, is escaping the tyranny of the finite mind and limiting body consciousness. That is freedom. And the only way to truly experience that is to work on yourself. That's the only way. And where we are, where you and I are right now, Jeff, the only way to start to taste real freedom is to actually do self-inquiry work. And to start peeling away, peeling away, and peeling away. But we now have a robust, repeatable system that gives tangible, tangible results in terms of being able to do it. So, yeah, right now, do we experience freedom? No. No. It takes true self-liberation. The only way to do on that is self-inquiry, meditation and self-inquiry. And then you start to taste it. And once you start to taste real freedom, nothing else will suffice. Nothing else will suffice. I, the, the moment that I did the, the thing about brushing my hair, and I, I felt what that, what that was like to remove that. I was, so, I was like out of my mind. I was like, oh, this is going to be unbelievable. Two weeks, I'm going to do this in two weeks. Just one time doing it, the tangibility of this limitation moving and more of the real you comes online. There's nothing like it yet, but until we taste it, until we taste it, all these other poor uh, substitute gratifications of body consciousness and information. We're suffering inside instead of going inside to realize why we're suffering. We just keep using substitute gratifications. And this is the point of the work that I do as RJ is to give everyone a blueprint in terms of how to go within and realize and realize the treasure that we all are. When you finally get to the core limiting belief, and understand it. Do you have some sort of visceral body response? Big time. Yeah, yeah. It's um, there's a shift, and it's tangible, right? So w- the pattern subconscious egoic mind is a collapsing of consciousness and a constriction of our energy. Okay. When you remove one of those programs, there's an expansion and an inner shift, and it's tangible and it's undeniable. There's, there is a sense of more of the real you. And like I said, nothing else feels like that. No, nothing, because nothing can. So yeah, there's, there's this tangible sensation. This gets removed and the real you just starts to expand. And as the real you starts to expand, you, you become voracious. Voracious for more, more and more and more of what you really are. And like I said, there is no substitute for the real you. There's no bodily sensation, information, so-called knowledge, concepts, ideologies, beliefs can ever come close to the tangible, the tangible feeling of, of your own liberation. Do you think that there are certain entities behind this brainwashing? (laughs) Yes. And I don't think that. I know that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, could be a whole nother conversation, Jeff, this is this is absolute assistance from non-human intelligence. Without question. Without question. And it also it also takes a small aspect of humanity to go along with it. So when you have both of those things working against the overall population, that's where this that's where this comes from. It's it's about subjugation and control. I mean, what I mean, look at this world. It's about subjugation and control. And there's a reason why these kind of teachings are not taught or readily available. Because it breaks it. Because it shatters it. Because it's no longer effective. All the brainwashing and societal conditioning is no longer effective. So of course these kind of teachings aren't made available. Of course these things aren't taught in school. Well, they aren't yet. But it's because there's there is something behind it. Look at it this way. Let's look at it this way. A lion is a predator, right? A shark is, and of course there's others, right? But a lion, is, is, is a lion evil or is it just hungry? It's just its nature, right? It's just a predator. 
when it's chasing down a gazelle to eat, it's not angry. It's hungry. It wants to eat. That's it. Start to apply that in terms of your question. Start to apply that in terms of your question. Of course, there are other levels of incarnate entities that, that operate in a predatory nature. Of course there is. Of course there is. And that's where a lot of this comes from. That's where a lot of this comes from. That's the absolute truth. Did you do all this work before you had that incredible healing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've been out of my mind since, since I reincarnated. So, yeah, um, this, the, the teachings or the protocols, the understandings and the exercises in Change Your Mind, I did this, as I said, I mean, I can't remember the exact date, but it was somewhere like around 13 years ago, 14 years ago, something like that. I, I, I would have done anything to liberate myself anything. And so I, I decided to come up with this 14 day notebook exercise to question every one of my actions, behaviors, because I knew my life wasn't my own. I could feel it. It was, it was literally driving me mad. It was literally dread. It's like, why am I doing all these things? These are not my desires. I know they're not, this is not me, not even close to being me. So I had to come up with some kind of system. And so this is where we got the teachings to change your mind. Yeah, this, this was, I mean, I'm old, Jeff. I'm I'm 52. So this was in my late 30s. Yeah, in, in, in my late 30s. And this well predates uh, I became, quote unquote, permanently paralyzed uh, when I was 45. So and I I know that I wouldn't have been able to do some of the things that I did, even though I had awakened into into authentic, authentic cosmic consciousness and remembered how self-healing and all this works. But those limitations had already been removed. I knew. I mean, if I would have thought that it was impossible, I don't think I would have gotten the information to remember the tangible remembering of how to put a, bo a destroyed body back together. If I didn't already know that all limitations were self-imposed, they don't really exist because I had already removed them through the workings of, of change your mind. I just needed the challenge. I needed the challenge. And the biggest challenge I could have given myself, apparently, knock on wood, I don't want a bigger one than that. The biggest challenge I gave myself was, you know, so-called permanent paralysis from the chest down, 48 hours to live and deathly sick. But the limitations, the deprogramming had happened, you know, maybe seven years prior. Interesting that you said the challenge I gave myself. So do you think you manifested that challenge on purpose? Oh, yeah. I mean, without, uh, as sure as you and I are talking. Yeah. Part of the life plan. Part of the life plan. We all, every one of our obstacles and challenges, Jeff, are put there by us. Because our consciousness does not evolve without a challenge. If we all sat on our couch and binge watch The Blacklist, which I love The Blacklist. Mm, my, that's a great show. Also, yeah, great show, right? Yeah. But if we if we all sat on the couch and did, never gave ourselves a challenge, there's no evolution. So the challenges and the obstacles, and, and and there's no really greater challenge than like severe, severe health challenges, right? So absolutely, I was completely and utterly on my life plan. I've been asked that question. It's like, RJ, how out of alignment must you have been to become permanently paralyzed and you know, deathly sick? I was, like, I was not out of alignment at all. I gave myself that challenge. I needed a worthy challenge and a destroyed body, you know, permanently paralyzed and blah, 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 blah. That's about as big a challenge as one can give themselves. So of course, yeah, absolutely. We all do this. I'm just aware of mine, but we all do this. It's universal. As you started dropping these limiting beliefs, did you feel like your life force was increasing? Oh, what a great question. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me, and let me explain that metaphysically. That's a great question, Jeff. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So when we have uh, an identification, an attachment, right, to a belief, a con to the body, to a belief, a concept, an ideology, a role, so-called knowledge, right? Okay. So if we identify or we're attached to something, right, that's our energy that we're using. Spider-Man shoots his spider web to some building, right? He's now stuck to the building. Where is he going? He's going nowhere. He's going nowhere. Our energy is the spider web. So as soon as we identify or attach to anything, we weaken ourself energetically. The more attachments and identifications that you have, the weaker you are. Detachment or cutting the spider webs. Detachment is power because you regain all of your energy all of it. And we use our energy for everything. So yes, absolutely. As you deprogram, you literally become more and more powerful. 
Do you feel physically lighter or more energetic or all of the above? All of the above. You feel more like yourself. Your true self. You feel more like yourself, a supremely high frequency, immortal creator being. You actually start to feel like yourself because you've transcended the limitations of body consciousness and the pattern subconscious mind. And you literally tangibly realize that you can do anything that you set your desire and intention to. Yeah, you feel lighter, freer, happier, more powerful, more energized. Absolutely, because that's our natural state. Feeling lethargic and tired and fearful and full of anxiety and depression and worry. That's not our natural state. And when we work on ourselves properly, properly, we transcend all of that and we feel like who and what we really are, invincible. We touched on this earlier and you were saying that writing it down is key. So is this book more of like a workbook for you to write down your observations or is that something that you do separately with a journal. Yeah, part of the 14 day notebook exercise, the instructions are there, get yourself a notebook and a pen and start logging what it is that you're doing and question why you're doing it. Question why you're doing it. The book is, the book is broken, the book is almost like three books. It's broken into three parts. Meet the real you, maintain the real you and express the real you. And that has to do with all the deprogramming. And there's something in the book called uh, an energy diagnostic system by asking you, and it's, uh, which is just a, a cool name. It's just something, I, just something I gave it because I had a name. It's energy diagnostic. Oh, RJ, that's great. Right. So, but what it is, you ask yourself questions in regards to actions and behaviors, people and circumstances. Because a lot of us wonder, God, is this relationship really good for me? Or is this, does this activity that I do all the time or hanging out with these friends or is this job, is this really good for me? I know it gives me a paycheck, da, da, da. but now I developed a, an energy diagnostic system. You just ask yourself some very simple questions. You get a quantifiable metric, Jeff. By asking yourself questions, you give yourself a score from zero to five and you ask yourself these five different questions. You add up the numbers and you will actually tangibly have a quantifiable metric about whether you are increasing your energy, raising your frequency and empowering yourself, or the other end of the spectrum, you're disempowering yourself, you're lowering, lowering your frequency and you're having less energy. So now we have a, ver a, a verifiable metric. And like I said, the book is kind of like three books. There's the notebook exercise. Then there's things that we can do to maintain this new discovery. And then these things to express the real you. And along the way, we actually get to measure whether this relationship is right for me, this job is right for me, this uh, circumstance or event that I do all the time, is this really right for me? Am I enriching my life? Am I raising my frequency? Am I empowering myself? Do I feel lighter? Do I feel happier? Do I feel more joyous, more determined by, by after doing this? Or is it the other end? Now you know. And once you know, this is the key, Jeff, once you know and you see it written down in front of you by yourself, you're the one who wrote it, it becomes a lot harder <laughs> To disregard that it becomes a lot harder to do. It's one thing if someone just says something and you kind of know it's true or you hear the voice in your head and you're like, no, no, no. You actually do the work and you see the numbers and you see it in front of you. It becomes really hard to convince yourself to ignore it. Are there any other exercises in the book that you haven't mentioned? Well, there, I mean, there's, there's a whole, there's a whole section about expressing the real you. And we talked about when you asked about a list about limiting beliefs, there is a whole list of the, the universal characteristics or traits of the real you, because it's God, right? The I am. It's love and wisdom who subsets your talents and abilities. And that's absolutely universal. That's actually what we are. And so there's an exercise in there to how to harness every one of these universal traits and employ them in your daily life. And this is how to express this real you, not your brainwashing and all your, uh, da, 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 not that. But once you see these universal characteristics, here's a whole bunch of different things that you can do to incorporate these things into your life. And that's how you actually get to express the real you. I think that we all have mind chatter and there's probably thousands, if not tens of thousands of thoughts that go through our heads every day. Once you release these beliefs, does that mind chatter decrease at all? Oh, a great deal. A, a, a great deal. Yeah. And I'll, I'll go all the way to the, uh, to the end of that spectrum. 
<clears throat> I, I promise at a certain point, there, there is no voice in your head. None. I mean it. Now that's liberation. That's, that's what liberation is like. That this is not rolling. It's, it's gone. It's gone, right? Look at my eyes, a crazy eye, right? That, this is what happens. There's no voice. There's no inner voice in my head. There's no inner critic. I don't criticize myself or anybody else. It's gone. It's just gone. I'm no longer a consumer of beliefs, concepts, ideologies, roles, or substitute gratifications. I am a creator. And that has nothing to do with the harsh inner critic. That's how the harsh, that's how the, the ultimate creator stops itself through the harsh inner critic. And by doing this, doing this work tangibly, honestly, courageously, the voice in your head is gone. Once the voice in your head is gone, you feel like a million bucks. Your frequency is higher. You're freer. You're happier. You're more joyous. Boundless amounts of energy because you're not using all your energy to be attached to all these different societal conditionings and identifications that we've made just to fit in well we didn't come here to stay you don't have to fit in so yeah you start to you, you start to feel completely different completely and utterly different and now I, I i feel at that moment and only at that moment are you truly alive once you've made these changes does your social circle notice how different you are and do you stop fitting in with all your friends and family yeah you do that's exactly right jeff yeah so we can think of our frequency right right what what it is that we're emanating as like a song on a radio right now all our social circles for the most part we're we're, we're dancing to the same song thinking the same way same action, same kind of mindset, same kind of beliefs, right? Okay, well, you start deleting those limitations. You're no longer emanating that same song. You can't dance with those same dance partners. You just you just can't. It's a, there's a totally different tune going on. You're real frequency. There's no more electromagnetic interference. So yeah, so there's an, and the book talks about that a great deal about, I think it's top, you would think I would know, right? But top 25 signs, yeah. Top 25 signs that you're deprogramming your subconscious pattern egoic mind. So I, I list them the whole thing. And one of them is that your social circles change. Your social circles change. Now, I just want to add, add to this, Jeff, is that once you start, because people are like, well, okay, that's great. But don't you start to go back to all your old patterns? A bit? No. And I'll explain why. Once you truly feel better, you don't reach for something that you know is going to make you feel worse. It's gone. You've transcended that disease. So you don't reach for something. You feel great, right? When you feel great, you don't reach for something to make yourself feel terrible. Whatever, however you're vibrating, right? You then reach out for something that's in accordance with that vibration. When we feel terrible about ourselves, right? This is when we reach out for low frequency experiences. We reach out for the, for the wrong people to hang out with. Or we reach out for substitute gratifications, right? Whether it's I need to get drunk, I need to get I need to get high, I need to right, and I, I need to have sex, and it, whatever it is, right? And everything in moderation, even moderation. But when we are when we are feeling low frequency, we reach out for low frequency things because that's in accordance with our vibration. So as you start to feel better and better through doing this, you don't reach out for those things. You reach out for other things that are in accordance to your new vibration, your new frequency. What about you personally, when you did this for the first time, you told your partner, you know, I'm taking two weeks off. Did your partner eventually come along the ride with you or did that relationship dissolve? No, uh, no one has come along this ride completely. This is, this is my ride. <laughs> this is what I'm here to do, right? So I, it's not about whether other people come along. I need to be an embodiment and I am of these teachings of this, of this, of, of, of the wisdom that transcends knowledge. So I'm an embodiment of this, and this is a gift to humanity. So I need to first embody it and then give it out to humanity. I, me doing this is not incumbent upon anyone else doing it, if that makes sense. Now, everyone will feel like a million bucks, self-realization, freedom, live the life that they truly want to. But whether they do that or not doesn't stop me, right? It's my role to come here and do this, to be the embodiment of the teachings. And uh, I haven't had... Uh, it's not required for me. It's not required for me. My partner doesn't have to be a, you know, self-realized and however you want to see me. They don't have to be that way at all. 
So no, no one, no one goes along for the ride. This is my ride. As long as I punch my own ticket, that's what matters. What about when you start changing behaviors and your social circle tells you, Hey, RJ, you can't do that because they're still attached to those limiting beliefs. What do you tell them? I, Jim, I've never had anyone say, I can't do that to me. Now that could just be because I'm crazy or maybe that's just, uh, I don't know. I don't give off the vibe where someone would say, Hey, you can't do that. Right. Or say, Hey, that's, that's impossible or whatever. Right. It's well. So I haven't had that occur. And I've, I've just found that however I'm vibrating, then the right people, the right circumstances, the right events, the right things just manifest themselves because the universe is a multifrequential, multidimensional hull of mirrors, and it simply mirrors and amplifies our frequency, and it's all designed for self-mastery. So as you start changing, everything else around you changes automatically. You don't have to do anything about it. The people that aren't meant to be in your life will fall away, and the new people that are meant to be in your life will just show up. Same with the experiences, same with all these different uh, interests all of a sudden. You start meeting other people that have those interests. Just like your old interests are gone, that social circle will start to die away and a new circle will start. But there is a limbo. There is a limbo period. Everything that we were anchored to before, we cut these cords through our own liberation. We're not anchored to these things anymore. So, so what that means is, Jeff, what was driving our behavior before is no longer driving us. So we're almost in this sort of nebulous, like, I don't know what to do with myself. I don't know what I'm really excited about. I don't know where I fit in. This, that's okay. That's okay. It's part of the process. Soon enough, you'll be anchored. You'll be anchored to the I am, to what you really are. And then life just unfolds. It's not even a thought process. And I know that sounds weird for someone to say life's not a thought. It's not. Life is not a thought process. Thinking is a low frequency activity. Thinking is not knowing. Thinking is not creating. So once, once you allow that to happen, everything else that's meant for you can actually start to show up. And the only way things that are meant for you to show up is you have to shed what you call the past. How can there be a new future for you if you just keep holding on to the the, the old story and your old identity? And by removing your limiting beliefs, you're making way for the new data point on your life plan to show up, which is really the whole point of coming here to live out your life plan as, as beautifully and as powerfully as you can. Have you found that as you release these limiting beliefs, you're more able to reach higher states of consciousness. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, like uh, absolutely. You're not tethered. So the beliefs, the concepts, the ideologies that are that are here in this realm are low frequency. Spider Man shooting a spider web. So so you're stuck to these things because you identify with them. You've been programmed, right? So if you cut all those off, right, they're not there anymore. Your natural state is to be connected to God. You're a fractal of God. So your natural state now, you start to actually move into self-realization and, and God consciousness, which is actually past self-realization, by the way. Your frequency, your frequency raises because you are a high frequency being and you're not tethering yourself to the beliefs, the identifications, the societal conditioning and the brainwashing. It's gone. Automatically become higher frequency. You're automatically tapped in to your higher mind and your higher self because you don't have the limiting beliefs scrolling like a ticker tape in the on the bottom of the screen. So you're con you're connected to your higher mind. Absolutely. Well, if people want to find out more about this book, should they go to your website or Amazon? Amazon, Amazon, go to Amazon. It's, uh, <clears throat> I did the audible on this one. I wasn't given the opportunity to narrate, uh, my first book, supercharged self healing. Uh, but I was, or I demanded the opportunity to, uh, to narrate the second book. And so I'm the narrator, uh, which, the feedback is, is that um, to have the paperback and to listen to me narrate the book is extraordinarily powerful because my voice is the embodiment of the teaching. So it's sinking in and you're reading at the same time. So yeah, just uh, go to Amazon. It's in all the different, you know, Kindle, paperback, Audible, um, CD, believe it or not. Uh, and the book debuted as a bestseller, which I can't thank everyone enough, which is really amazing. But yeah, the book will absolutely won't just change your mind. It'll change your life completely and utterly. And yeah, the best the best way to get and don't be deterred if you click on the paperback and it's not coming till November. It's because it's already into its second printing. It's sold out and it's sold out right away. So just wow. be patient. Get the audible. Get the audible. In the meantime, you can listen to me. You know, 
it's it's in my voice and then the paperback will be available and i su- i suggest listening and reading at the same time when you can well i know you do other things besides writing books so what do you have going on that you want us to know about oh great question okay so i'm doing a live retreat i'm not sure when you'll you'll make this uh public jeff but the live retreat is uh october 9th through the 13th in uh Canandaigua, New York, and this beautiful resort. And then a couple of weeks after that, I'll be teaching two more courses this year, just two more. And one of them will be the online course live with me, Change Your Mind online course live with me. And I'm going to be teaching another course, Jeff, this year, and it's called The Bible Deconstructed Part One. I'm going to be talking about, yeah, I've been wanting to talk about this for a very long time. This is not intellectualism or researching and trying tying things together. My memory is intact. So I'm going to be talking about the truth, the real truth about the book that it has the greatest effect on this planet. And I'm going to be talking about in the very beginning, I'm going to be talking about Genesis and the book of Moses. So that will begin uh, the last couple of days of October. There's a wait list on my website. Change Your Mind, the online live course will start at the end of October, and the Bible Deconstructed Part 1 will also start at the uh, the very end of October. That sounds like it would be a really cool book. Is that in the works? It might be. It might be. I have I have some big plans for my work in regards to the Bible. So we'll I kind of let things unfold. See see where it see where it takes me, but I'm very very excited to teach that. There are aspects of that book. Here's here's what I want to say about the Bible. What I find fascinating about that incredible book is that most of the parts, from my direct experience, Jeff, most of the parts in that book that are untrue are the parts that everyone believes. And the parts that no one believes and thinks it's just nonsense, those are the parts that are actually true. And I want humanity to know the truth. It's time. It's time for humanity to know the truth. And that's why that's why I'm teaching that course. Can you give us one example of that? Yeah, yeah. I'll give one example of that. People talk about the virgin birth of Christ, right? Did that is that really true? Was it really a virgin birth? It is my direct understanding is that Joseph, his earthly father, was or is or was an incarnation of an ascended master master r also known as also incarnations moses merlin saint germain and many others is the highest level metaphysical master that's ever walked the earth mary not technically an ascended master but just as evolved as any ascended master and the tech the technicalities of that are unimportant but just as evolved as joseph just as evolved as christ because they knew that they were going to be the earthly parents of another ascended master and because of the talent the metaphysical abilities of his earthly father joseph joseph through we could use the word magic but don't take it the wrong way because real magic is metaphysics and metaphysics is magic he was able through through his own talents and abilities create a portal for the being that we know as Christ to actually come on through and actually come right into Mary. And he, I can tell you exactly, he put his hand and his other hand right on her lower belly and her concentration and his talents and abilities actually created a portal for that being to come all the way down and go right into Mary. And that is how Christ was actually that's the virgin birth. That's exactly how it occurred. So that's one example of what I'll be talking about when I talk about the deconstruction of the Bible. All right. Well, if people want to reach out to you and ask you questions or find out more, how do they do that? Uh, they can join the on the on the website, ascendthefrequencies.com. There is a newsletter. I highly suggest signing up for that. You'll also get a free um, guide to my instantaneous meditation magic tricks. You'll be able to meditate in one second. So you wanna get rid of anxiety and depression. I'll show you exactly how to do it literally in once by using real magic and magic is metaphysics. So that's uh, by joining up the newsletter. And also I would say 
my Instagram, which is RJ Spina dash ascend the frequencies. I post daily on there, or I don't do it, but it gets posted daily on there about things that are upcoming. And also my uh, YouTube channel, which is also RJ Spina dash ascend the frequencies. There's probably at this point, Jeff, uh, in turn, in, including conversations with you, my friend, there's probably about a hundred hours, might be more now, a hundred hours of free material on YouTube, all the videos I've done myself, all the interviews I've done myself. So if people are interested in more of this work, you can watch some of the videos. And then if you're really desirous of radical transformation for yourself, take a course. My courses are unlike, as are my books, dare I say, they're unlike anything else on this planet. And those are the two, those are the two courses that are coming up. Change Your Mind, the online course live with me and the Bible Deconstructed Part One. Well, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? Yes, of course. What what we're seeing right now, okay, what's going on on our planet, or at least the perception management in terms of what you're allowed to see. I want everyone to know what is really going on is just simply the thrashings of a dying consciousness. It's absolutely inevitable. All these things I talk about, about the subconscious pattern, egoic mind, the ego mind identity, all these things, these, we cannot move, we cannot ascend the frequencies. We cannot expand our consciousness by being identified with what goes on here, by being attached to what goes on here. This is the thrashings of a dying consciousness. We are being birthed into, a, into our own higher mind. We are moving into the fourth frequency. We're not moving into 5D. Let's be accurate. Part of the reason why we have trouble anchoring these things in is because we're using terminology that is not accurate. When we start to have accuracy, it grounds it into, it grounds it into manifestation. So we are leaving the third frequency and all of us are moving into the fourth frequency. So what you're seeing is the thrashings of the dying consciousness or what we call a 3D matrix. We're moving above and beyond it. Now, the best way to go rather than kicking and screaming is to, go, is to go with a smile on your face. And you do that by no longer identifying with what's happening. Don't be identified with your old story. Okay, let that go. Let these things play themselves out because this is the background to your own ascension. We all agreed to this. I just remember, we all agreed to all this. So don't don't go kicking and screaming. <laughs> go go joyously. Go with empowerment. Go go with the knowingness that we created this for ourselves, so we can see ourselves in the act of creation and overcoming all our old limitations. RJ, thank you for your message and thank you for coming back again and being my guest. Oh, it's my pleasure, Jeff. I love you. I love I love talking to you. I'm sure we'll do it again. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, brother. I love you too. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.